sometimes I'm the kind of bloke who likes to just get in and fix things, make it happen. But when it comes to raising your children, it's a long-term investment. Sometimes you just gotta wait, trust in God and be patient and continue to love. Good things take effort and that's been really important to Robin and I and we're seeing some rewards for that. Just that my kids want to be with me. You know, I see so many dads who haven't put that investment in and so their kids have gone off to do other things. But to hang out with your dad's okay, it's cool in my family. And, and wow, isn't that special, you know? We're just ordinary people, just ordinary lives like everyone else. But in this story, God has chosen to do something great through us and with us. And, and wow, <laughs> it's exciting to be part of it. The journey that we've been on since selecting Juan David from the stand at the front of the church has taken us to a place that we never envisaged it would ever go. Now to go and meet him and say, yep, he's real and, and he really is like that, just tops it all. And so he's really looking forward to us coveted. He knows it's getting close and counting down the days. You know, we can be so dependent on the petty things around us. To have someone in your family like Juan David who has real issues is a huge benefit to get your perspective right. It allows your family to focus outside of themselves. Favourite quote of mine is even when you don't think God knows what he's doing, he does. And I think, you know, he directs our paths and guides our ways and you have to get to the end before you can see what God has chosen to do through you. It was in 2008 we had some significant flooding here in Mackay and, and it's etched pretty deep in our memories here. It still just seems like yesterday. It's, it's remarkable to see the recovery that's happened but it's hard to believe that that could even happen but it, it certainly did. Heavy rain here is, is pretty typical but, um, but that particular morning it didn't, it didn't let off and eventually the yard here all filled up with water. And... We could see it slowly building up so we were able to go right through our house and lift everything up. Um, we had lots of pavers that we could bring inside and bricks to put underneath all our furniture and lift things. I remember sitting like here in the lounge room uh, with our feet in water eating our breakfast going there's nothing we can do, this, uh, this situation is, is beyond our control. We'd been used to having the school flood and stuff like that. We knew how to deal with that situation, but when it got to the point that the water was coming up through the patio and seeping into the house, it got really real. And you always ask yourself, is that high enough? Lift, lifted like, you know, this much is, is as much as we need to lift and some stuff still got wet, but I think we came off pretty well with it. So we were talking about yesterday with some friends and a couple of days before their wedding, the whole car and it's underwater and they're running all their gear upstairs. God was really looking after us because we had friends who just came in and said, can we help you? And they helped us mop and dry the floors. And, and we had an insurance company who was in within a couple of days with their big extractors and dried all our house out. I guess those sorts of situations, the whole community sort of gets involved and surrounds people with support. And that's what we definitely notice for ourselves. The one thing about natural disasters, it gives people the opportunity to rise up and be who they can be in, in terms of helping each other. And, and sometimes, they never do that because they never feel an opportunity to do that. So I think that it disrupts our normality. Yeah, and there's a good link there to what we do with compassion is by seeing people whose normality is always disrupted really helps us to focus, well, hang on, we need to help. You see on TV and other media things that happen in other parts of the world and you can feel sad about it or sorry about it. But when you know somebody like one David, it makes it personal and it, you do actually think about it differently. Hijo mío, no te olvides de mi ley y tu corazón guarde mis mandamientos, porque las alguras de día y años de vida y paz te aumentará. Nunca te aparte de ti la misericordia y la verdad. Hazlas a tu cuello, escribe en la tabla de tu corazón y hallará gracia y buena opinión ante los ojos de Dios y de los hombres. Fíjate de Dios en todo tu corazón y él te endezará tu vereda. Yo tenía, era en el 98 y yo tenía, iba a cumplir los ocho años. Yo recuerdo que inmediatamente yo le dije a mi mamá que confiáramos en Dios y nos pusimos a orar. Y luego nosotros nos fuimos con algunos vecinos al, al refugio. Y ese huracán dejó mi casa destruida. Yo he creído que, que el Señor ha estado a mi lado, que si no fuera por los planes que el Señor tiene en la vida de cada uno de nosotros, nada, nada se mueve sin la presencia del Señor. Sí, ve, yo tengo cuatro hijos, él es el más pequeño. 
hace dos años, hizo ahora en agosto, que su papá se mató trabajando, cayó de una segunda. Yo no tengo padre, pero yo tengo al Señor Jesús que me fortalece, me da gozo y amor. Y también que ayude a toda mi familia a convertirse en Cristo. Como madre, eh, yo quisiera ver a Juan David en el futuro. Primeramente, que nunca deje a Cristo. Bueno, le pediría a Dios que, que no, no parte con él hasta que yo no vea a mi niño grande, que él mismo se sepa defender como un niño huérfano y solamente me tiene a mí. We made a couple of good friends through church who were heavily involved in the building industry and, and they referred us. And we were fortunate enough to find our niche in that space. We did all the top end renovations. At the peak of it, I think we employed 15 people. Over the, the years, we won 17 industry awards. And it was great to be honored by our peers like that. We were going along okay, but it, for me, it was all consuming. It took lots and lots of hours out of my day. And I was very anxious about my kids growing up and not having the opportunity to see that. You know, there's lots of things you can say, oh, I'll do that later or I'll have another go at that. But kids growing up, there's only one, one bite of that cherry and once it's done, it's over. And, and I wanted to be part of our kids' lives. So for family reasons, we chose a career change and moved to teaching. I love kids and so it seemed a logical thing for me to do. And if you can make that connection, yeah, I really enjoy that. And it meant that I spent more time with my family and when they were on holiday, so was I. Peter's always ridden motorbikes and when I started going out with Peter, that was accepted. He didn't have, actually have a car at that time. We went on a honeymoon on a motorbike. We went from the bottom of Queensland to the top up to Cairns. They had kids and they sold the motorbikes and it was like dad's happiest day in his life and I told him when I was getting my license, dad I want to get my motorbike license as well so straight away he went out and we bought a motorbike for me and he got his bike. And Yeah it's one of those things I don't think everyone really understands because not everybody's into it but it's a really family thing for us and it's really so much more about the social environment of it all. Our last trip that we did was a big trip down to Tasmania and back which was awesome, awesome experience, different roads that we got to ride together and not only in the places that we go but the adventure of getting there. I think that's always been something for us as a family, the adventure of getting somewhere not just the destination. Well we, we have a joke amongst the friends that we travel with that all good trips start with the spreadsheet but you know <laughs> the planning and the and the actual being purposeful about what you're doing is really important so you know in, in terms of traveling if we don't prepare well, well, we can't expect it to go well. And, and I think the same is true for our children. And for them to grow in the way that we, we'd like them to grow up, you've got to put the miles in early. We do things together as a family. I think that's been a good opportunity for them to model to us looking out for other people. Um, and whether that's been in our local community or going on holidays together and that sort of thing, or our opportunities that we've had through Compassion. Uh, to sponsor a child that we would be thinking yeah, beyond what we've got to, to sharing, I guess, just how much God's blessed us with, with other people so that they would experience that same love <laughs> um, that we are so fortunate to have. Luego que mi padre murió, mi madre, en conjunto conmigo, me llevaron al ministerio. En ese entonces teníamos necesidades, aunque ahora también, pero ahora menos. Y le agradezco mucho a mi patrocinador, que es The Hopper Family, el cual le agradezco mucho que desde que yo entré a, al proyecto, ellos siempre me han apoyado, me han dado la mano en los momentos difíciles. Yo hasta lloré de la emoción porque me sentí muy bien cuando eh, vi y leí esa carta en el cual ellos me mandaban a decir que sentían la muerte de mi padre. Como siempre se lo he mandado a decir en cartas que los quiero hasta donde ellos no se imaginan. A decir en la carta también que lo he visto en fotos, pero mi anhelo y deseo es algún día verlo en persona, eh, conocerlo más. Si yo tuviera a mi padrino o patrocinadores en este momento enfrente, yo le, le diera un abrazo, un apretón de mano y la verdad que salerían palabras de cómo agradecerle lo que ellos han hecho por mí. We chose one David from all the photos we had because he was the same age as our son Ben, as close as we could get, because we didn't know how else to choose anybody. 
We were looking for one that was a similar age to one of us so that we could see how they were growing as we were growing up uh, and receiving letters from him from time to time, hearing about what he was up to and what he was doing. But more than that, that he would ask us how we found school or things that we enjoyed doing. And even just going back and reading some of the letters going, oh, actually, I remember reading this like when I was a kid sitting around the breakfast table or, or praying for one, David, at the time. Uh, thank you to the things you have sent. Pray for my mother who has been a little sick and I will pray for you. As I've told you, someday I hope to see you face to face. Regards to Ben and Kate and all the others. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find on yours, Ben? Oh, there's just more on the other side there because it goes about how he wants to become a doctor, study medicine to keep the humanity. And he says, to cure the diseases of people. I don't know if proud's the right word, but you feel proud to be part of that, that he's an incredible man, that you have played some part in his life. And reading that letter there, I think it was in 2003, when he was talking about, oh, I want to be a doctor because I want to help people. It's again, that hit me, you know, it was, it's pretty cool. I want, to, I want to become a professional, but for that I have to study. I am already in year five. I think I am too young to be a professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> but as the eight-year-old boy urged his mother and three older siblings to join him in prayer, it was not to plead for their safety from the storm. I was really surprised, recalls Mrs. Gellner's. He didn't want to pray for himself or our family. He wanted to pray for others in the storm who might be suffering more than we were. We had no idea really of the impact that we were having in one David's life. It wasn't until I picked up a Compassion magazine and started reading the stories in the Dominican Republic. I said, Robin, hang on a minute, this is our lad. This is the boy we sponsored. And so we just go double check the names and everything. I'm like, yep, it is. He looks the same. It's the same kid. Mm. That was really exciting. And, and you know, as we get together as, as a family to reflect on that sort of realization and then starting to see, you know, that maturity coming through in the letters that we were sharing. And we used to write back to him as a family. Sometimes the kids would write and sometimes we'd write. And you can't underestimate yeah, the value that sponsoring has just in raising your own children. To, for them to look outside themselves and realise that, hey, the world isn't all about me mm. and there's other people in it who are doing it a lot tougher. And then there was stuff that didn't come out until after our sponsorship time had finished. We didn't find out how tough things were for one, David, until a long time after they happened. We found about hardship with his family. We found out about one of his family members having a drug habit that meant that he would steal things from one, David, and from the whole family. The the only thing we knew was we prayed for him all the time and we were reassured that God knew what he needed and was faithful in answering the prayers. We're really looking forward to seeing him. It was really great to be able to share with him um, and say, hey, we're going to come and visit you. And he says, oh, tears are running down my face. I'd be praying that I might get to, get to meet you one day. <laughs> what we did was when our sponsorship with Juan David was complete, we got back to Compassion and said, look, we'd like to sponsor again, but we'd like to sponsor in the Dominican Republic because if we ever do go and visit one day, at least then we can go and visit our sponsored child at the same time. And so we've sponsored a little girl, Ali, over there. So we're going to go and visit her and have a compassion visit with her. And we're really looking forward to that. We are under no illusion that Juan David is remarkable and not the norm. I would like to see Ali complete her education and go on to lead a fulfilled life within her community. And I hope that her trip allows us to develop that friendship a bit further and to help us grow in our understanding. I don't think that we've, we've got the full picture. It'd be good to have that. We haven't been outside of Australia in our lives. This is our first overseas trip. In six weeks, we'll be headed to the US. We've already purchased a motorcycle in there, the same as the one we've got here in Australia, just different color. <laughs> I'm really, the reason we're going to the US is because that's close to the Dominican Republic, to be honest. When one David went to university, um, a group of firefighters in Seattle became his new sponsors and they have sponsored him through university and we've been able to become friends with Michael Patterson, the main firefighter who's organised his sponsorship. One David's training to be a doctor and that's very exciting. We planned out the trip and gave Michael our itinerary and he put it out to the Compassion Network and said, look, at these friends from Australia coming to visit the US. And so all these people put their hand up and said, yeah, well, come visit us, come visit us. So we've got you know, little spots all over over the US that we're going to go and catch up with people who are part of the Compassion Network in the US. It'll be great. We're really looking forward to that. The thing we're really excited about is both of our daughters, Kate and Anna, are going to fly across and they're coming for two weeks and they're coming to visit Dominican Republic with us. I'm not sure when I'll ever get to do it again and so to be able to go over and go over with my family is just an awesome experience and to get to see both Juan David and, and little Ali. To meet what feels like a long lost relative or brother that you never never got to hug and I'm really looking forward to that. It's been a bit emotional you know to see that the first of my family's finally going to meet him and I, know I feel a little bit funny about it but I'm um, yeah I'm, 
I'm pretty excited for them, pretty excited for him as well to finally get to meet, meet us. <laughs> The diversity of the landscape of the US is just amazing and fantastic roads. I mean, seriously, we met a guy and he said, I went to Australia and you haven't got any roads. And I said, that's right, compared to here, we don't. <laughs> Meeting Michael was just great because Michael has become a really good friend and meet his family and encourage them. And uh, from Michael, we learn a lot about compassion and he has been to trips to other countries as well, as well as visiting one David, so he was able to help us to be prepared to visit. So as we travelled, we would meet compassion advocates and it was a humbling experience. We end up starting to call them old friends we met for the first time because they welcomed us with open arms. And they each had their own remarkable stories. We met one lady who sponsors 17 children. So just ordinary sponsors like us. And in that time we travelled 46 of the 50 states. By far and away the highlight of our trip was going across the Dominican Republic and being able to share that with our daughters was really special. Having that camera strapped to my hand, you know, looking for any sort of opportunities. Having no idea, I guess, how the footage is going to be used. So yeah, just really shooting a lot of different stuff. And so driving to the project that morning, I think it was sort of culture shock a little bit when we first stopped at the traffic lights and there's lots of people walking out between the cars selling things. It was bumper to bumper kind of traffic. So as we moved sort of out of the city into those more sort of rural areas and going, okay, this is about to happen. This is the main event, the main thing that we sort of come for. Lots of anticipation about what's about to unfold and what's about to happen. Que si te puede dar un abrazo. Que es un placer verte. Ellos dicen que ellos te ven más más grande. Dice que ellos te ven más grande que en la foto. They were very, very keen for us to see what Ali had been doing. Like, you know, they had folders of the school work and that kind of stuff. We also gave her a, um, a Spanish venture Bible. And so we wrote in that while we were there, and they translated it as we wrote it. They translated it for Ali. Rob was focused on writing in the Bible and stuff, and that was when one David showed up, and Kate looked up and said, Oh, hello. <laughs> I have no words now. <laughs> and well, I remember all the letters that I received from you. All the time I wrote, I wrote down that I would like to meet you. I would like to meet you. Because I feel myself like a part of your family. Yeah, you are. Uh, you are I was really impressed with the Compassion Project. The connection with the church and the way in which the church was responsible for the accountability of the project. And, you know, we met the senior pastor at the church. And in a country that's got so much corruption, mm -hmm. is, is really making a stand for the gospel. The really special part was Ali only lives just a short walk from the project and we walked around to her house and, and we met her grandmother and grandfather. A number of years ago their house had been completely blown down in a hurricane and one of the things that was really nice was that he wanted my opinion, you know, with my building background, on the job that he'd done. He'd rebuilt the place in block with a sheet roof and just simple battens and stuff and, and he was quite proud of it and so he should be. It was a really good job. It'd still be pretty hot in there in the middle of summer, I think. <laughs> We got to know a little bit more about their family situation because her mum works away and she sees her mum infrequently and apparently that happens a fair bit in the Dominican Republic where the grandparents will bring the children up. The grandparents that she's got are just amazing, godly people. 
and I think that's it's going to be a real encouragement for her in her spiritual walk. Uh, even though mum and dad are Ali's sponsors officially, I would really love to write her a letter or give her some of the photos that we took and just continue to encourage her. I guess now that I've met her, I really see her as my little sister. So the things that I would do for Kate, I'd really like to be more intentional in doing those sorts of things for her as well. We weren't able to visit one David's family in his, his yeah. home area because there was some outbreak of, of virus there so they asked us not to go. So those sort of things are still very prevalent. But he brought his mum and his mum had taken quite a long bus journey to, to come in to visit us. Kate, <laughs> I, I really thank the Lord so much and thank you for what you have done to my son. <laughs> <laughs> Was, wasn't it Anna? No, oh. just kidding. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> You're naughty. I'm so I get excited when I see them together. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> We went to visit his university and we had a good walk around there and he showed us where his different classrooms were. And at the moment he's using those skills and that passion for people in working in the hospital. He volunteers in hospitals a fair bit as part of his internship and clearly he must be pretty good at what he does. And while we were there they rang him up and he went in and did three hours one night just to help with the backlog of patients. You just really got to see his heart which is hard to see just through writing letters or communicating via Facebook but actually to be in someone's presence. That was the thing that was different. One day, he's a passionate man of God who really has a heart to serve others. As well as he's cheeky and likes to have fun or, or make jokes, which would be very similar to the way that we would make jokes within our sort of family or with friends. You would go, if you were you know, an Australian, <laughs> you would be a hopper. You're part of the hopper family, even though you've been living on the other side of the world. Our girls both happened to be wearing green shirts that day and the Australian shirt we gave to one day was a yellow one, so it was like the green and gold. So we were teaching him about Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. And he told us the next day that his mum went home and she was practising saying Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. So, so he's got a strident mum. Look at my dearly shirt, both of your shirt. Look, can you see your shirt? Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Show them what you're wearing, Ben. <laughs> when the mother came, Sunilda, the first thing she asked was about you. Where, where were you? Say, how's university going? How's the university going? Very good. Ya casi, 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 casi terminado. Almost finishing. Very good. Doing great. That's good. It's been a long time. It's very exciting. Ha sido mucho tiempo. Tiene que estar contento de ya terminar. Sí. Yes. Much to our surprise, we can't clear there's little opportunity for employment, even though he's got a degree as a doctor. When you start to inquire the people, well, what's the issue? Well, corruption is their problem. Mm. And so the likelihood that he would get one of the few jobs that's offered in a hospital he's is pretty right. slim, you know? And we say, so what are you going to do about that? I trust in God. God's got the plan already in hand. And Juan David has got that evidence in his life. Definitely watching mum and dad, they really wanted to go there to be a blessing to other people and there were so many different stories that we heard throughout the trip that we didn't realise were happening. Well through our Compassion family that we met in the US, we heard about this bloke Jack Lummy who had his house burnt down and he lost his motorbike, you know, and over there this moto taxi thing is a real source of income for a lot of these people. So I got together a few of motorcycle friends over here and said, look, you know, let's help a motorcycle in need. And so for $1,100, we bought him a new bike. And I showed him photos of the guys who'd helped in their bikes. And he was just really grateful. And he wanted to make sure that we thanked them all very much and that kind of thing. The most important moment for me was the McDonald's in San Pedro. Um, and it was magic too for, for Anna and Kate to be there and say to one David, hey, this is the magic moment, ready for this. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. And, and, um, this is how Dad talks to us. That's right, yeah. 
one David has grown up certainly with some male mentors in his life, but he's grown up without a father. And I really felt that he attributed that relationship to me. And for me to honor that and to show my fatherly love to him, it was important that the conversation we had that day was about, so what are your dreams, son? Where are you going? What's the steps to get from where you are now to where you are there? Those sort of conversations that, that father and son should have. But also it's the way in which Christ shows his love for us, isn't it? In that he says, what do you want, son? You know, you pray in my name and before you even ask, it'll be yours. And as earthly fathers know how to give their sons bread instead of a, a stone, how much more will your heavenly father show you love for you? And so when reflecting Christ's love in our families and extend that to one David through that compassion connection is just, um, was, was the magic moment of the visit for me. What he really wants to do is travel to the outlying areas and provide some medical care, assess the people there. And he has a lot of friends, compassion people who have other medical expertise to make a team of people who could do that. And you know, we don't know, is God using us to make those connections? So it might even be part of fulfilling one David's dream for what he wants to do. We don't know yet, you know, we've got to make a decision about whether or not we'll buy into that dream and whether we can be part of the assistance for it. It's no more the end of the journey than it is the end of the journey with your kids when they leave home. You know, it's just the beginning of another phase. And certainly that's how we feel about our relationship with Juan David. It's, it's going to continue on. And our relationship with Ali will strengthen as a result of having been to visit her too. And, and you know, that's got potential to go places as well. I mean, and that's why I say we'll be back. I think for Kate, she enjoyed getting to interact with some of the kids that we met along the way. Her passion is always, like Wine David, is to, to help other people in a medical capacity. And I think for herself, she can see that uh, maybe this is a way I can be serving, you know, in the future. Yeah. Saying goodbye, um, or see you later. <laughs> Wine David had obviously been practicing what he wanted to say to us in English. Oh, I couldn't even hold it together, like, but it was just, it was really special. And just to hear him say that he loves us. He thanked us and he told us what it meant to him to have us visit him and he said it all to us in English. We were so overwhelmed I don't think we actually heard most of what he said but it was very special. It was a bit of a wrench to say goodbye to him because he was our son and we had had that connection with him. I think the message that we came home with from the Dominican Republic resoundingly was, was these are people who know what it means to trust God mm -hmm. because they don't have a backup plan. And they say know. God will provide. We trust God and, and, and he does. And when you take their example and apply it to your life, it changes the way you think about, oh, well, should I be worried about applying for this job or should I be worried about whether I can pay for my house or what things haven't? Let's just trust in God and do what it is that he's calling us to do. Initially when you come back, there's lots of things that you think about, the things that I guess God's challenged your heart about while you've been away. And I find myself thinking, so am I really giving till it hurts? You know, because there was people there, you'd be in their homes and they were happy to give to a point where it would, you know, it was uncomfortable for them. Are we really doing that? Like, you know, when we come home and so changing my perspective to be thankful for the things that I have, but also to think about the way that I use them. For us and for me personally, have been blessed beyond belief that sponsorship journey that we've had with Wine David, I know is unique in some ways, but in other ways, there's no reason why it can't be someone else's story. You know, it'd be the same but different, for sure. What's important is the things that God's put in your heart and in your lives and how you can work with others and how you can serve Him. And that was a real lesson they taught us, that they do so much with so little and love, they love big. They, they need and they use very effectively the physical resource and the things that can be funded with the money you send. But without that genuine interest in who they are and their interest in us, you know, we came home to a letter from Ali to say, oh, it was great to see you. Did you like my family? You know, that wanting our love and wanting our attention. And, and I think that it's an unconditional love and it really is made unconditional by the fact that you're so far apart. But when you get there and see how that love has impacted in the lives of the people, it, it comes home to roost then because you feel it. I think one David has the potential to do anything that God calls him to and he puts his mind to. It'd be great if a guy of his quality and his integrity became the leader of the country. That's what the country needs. <laughs> but you know, God's got a plan for him and, and we're excited to be part of that and see what it is.